Dr. Ariana Stark. I'm a naturopathic physician. I graduated from uh, the college here in Portland in 1997 now, so it's been a little while. Um, before that, I worked on the East Coast in medical research for 15 years, so I have kind of an interesting background in both the scientific aspect of things and the natural aspect of things. So I like to see uh, things, natural support options for our bodies that have some scientific support behind it. So I like to see the data to make sure that, um, that what we're doing for ourselves is actually beneficial and healthy. Because there certainly is a lot of stuff out on the internet these days and not all of it is accurate. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, diet and lifestyle choices for health. Um, and certainly you need to live as if your life depends on it because it really does. You know, a health, good health is a choice that we make. Um, a natural lifestyle is not something that a lot of us are just brought up in, especially these days. Um, the standard American diet acronym SAD is, is pretty accurate because most of the, the, what we grow up with these days is high carbs, high fat, you know, poor quality foods, fast foods. Um, so at this point in our culture, we have to make the conscious choice to have a healthy lifestyle. Um, and the main thing about that is to understand that food is fuel. Food has become so much more than that in our culture. You know, it's the manja, manja, eat, you need to eat, you need to eat to feel good, you need to eat to bring the community together. And while that, all of those aspects of food are, are good, it certainly brings us together as a community and a family, we need to remember that the real reason for eating is to fuel our body. And so we need good fuel in the gas tank. We don't need bad fuel, because if we have bad fuel, then the engine's not going to run right. Um, the right carbohydrates for balancing blood sugar and insulin. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. Physical activity uh, for burning that fuel so you can balance the, the calories in versus the calories out. Um, really the only way to lose weight is to burn more calories than you take in, to have a negative energy balance, and that's really the way you lose weight. Now how you do that healthfully is another story. So food provides energy performing the activities of daily life. And it's a mixture. Um, the most common ways we break up food in terms of the way the body looks at it is as a mixture of carbohydrates, fat, and protein. Um, and most foods are a mixture of these macronutrients. Macronutrients means the large types of food groups. Micronutrients are usually the uh, minerals and vitamins, which are present in very, very small amounts. The macronutrients are the big stuff, the stuff that really makes up our diet. So the easiest way to, to have a balanced diet is to really balance what's on your plate. Um, make half of it vegetables, quarter whole grains and a quarter protein, and you'll be a, do a lot towards having a really good healthy diet. You know, the typical American diet is usually spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> but what we really need is the opposite. We need a lot more protein and a lot less carbohydrates. Um, and so and if, it, if those carbohydrates are mainly coming from vegetables and not from concentrated starches, we'll actually have a much healthier diet. Um, this is probably one of the most important slides of the evening in terms of how to have a healthy diet. First thing, don't skip meals, especially breakfast. You need to eat on a regular basis. And so it's kind of like stoking the fires. Uh, when you first get up in the morning, you've got to stoke those fires. You've got to get them going. And then you've got to feed it regularly throughout the day. When you skip a meal, then the fire burns out. Then you've got to get it going again. And what happens when you first start a fire? It flares up before it settles down. That flaring up creates inflammation in the body. So you want to make sure that you have a steady, even flame going throughout the day. And that's your basal metabolic rate your, is just steady throughout the day. It's not going up and down um, so that you're burning your fuel at an even rate. The best way to do that is to have um, three small meals a day and two snacks. So you're basically eating every two to three hours will help balance your blood sugar levels. And to make sure you have 
protein at every meal because protein helps us balance insulin. Insulin's job is to turn sugar into fat. So if we have too much insulin, any excess sugar we have is going to turn into cholesterol and triglycerides and fat. And so the best way to have a healthy body composition is to balance your insulin levels. And by balancing your blood sugar, you balance insulin. So when you have protein at every meal, the protein helps slow down the absorption of the sugar, helps you burn the sugar in an even way so that you can um, balance your insulin production. And sometimes we'll actually use protein powder to increase that protein, especially in the morning. I find using a smoothie in the morning with protein along with your breakfast, not instead of your breakfast, but with your breakfast, actually helps you boost your protein and balance your blood sugar and set you up so that you'll have a good day. Because the more rapidly your food is absorbed, if your blood sugar starts shooting up really quickly, your pancreas is going to think, oh man, if this sugar keeps going the way it's going, it's going to end up all the way up here. So it secretes enough insulin to, to take care of this much sugar. Well, the sugar goes up and then it starts to go down. And so then you have insulin up here and sugar here, and that's where you have that excess insulin. And the excess insulin will turn sugar into fat. And insulin by itself is pro-inflammatory. It increases inflammation in the body. And we're finding now that inflammation is really the underpinning of most chronic disease. Most chronic disease starts with inflammation, whether it's cardiovascular disease or cancer. It always starts with the body being chronically inflamed, chronically aggravated, just heated up and running at a high temperature all the time. So the glycemic index is actually a measurement of how fast a food turns into sugar. And sometimes it's not really intuitive. We've all heard, for instance, that dried fruit are really high in sugar. Well, actually, things like dried apricots are really high in fiber and not so high in sugar. So apricots are actually low on the glycemic index, um, but some other fruits might be higher. So this is all of what we experience when we don't um, balance our blood sugar level. When we eat that really sugary food, we get a really high production of sugar right into the bloodstream. And high blood sugar will cause you to release a lot of insulin. And then insulin's job is to pull that sugar out of the bloodstream and into cells. And so all of a sudden, your blood sugar is going to crash. And then you're going to start to feel hungry and nervous and irritable and what are you going to want to eat? You're going to want to eat that sugar again. And so you're going to reach for the worst kind of food which are high glycemic index food which will start the cycle all over again. So when you do a lot of sugary foods, like the worst thing I can think of is these really sugary breakfast cereals. You give kids that for breakfast and you send them off to school and so their blood sugar goes up and then it crashes and then they eat sugary snacks and it goes up and it crashes. So all day long you're doing this. And any teacher will tell you that if there's like a sugary snack break that afterwards the kids just become really agitated from all that sugar because they got to burn it up. And so we want to avoid this kind of vicious cycle of high blood sugar, high insulin. So you want to stick to foods that are on the low glycemic index. So, you know, pretty much you can say, well, things that are on the high index are things like sweetened cereal, soda, high fructose corn syrup. Fructose is a different sugar than glucose. Glucose is what our brain uses to burn. Sucrose is what table sugar is, and that's a glucose and a galactose molecule stuck together. Fructose is something different, and our liver looks at it completely differently than it does sucrose. <laughs>